Look at this stone. It's like see-through in places, but it looks like almost like a, a tapestry of a forest, like a rainforest with mountains. Whoops. Oh, that's the end of it. Did it break? Oh, crap. Ugh, all right. Look at this stone. It's so beautiful in the sense that it... Ah, just kidding. This one is still um, fine. But... Look at it. It's like mountains with clouds, and then up in the background, it goes... The landscape goes up higher, and then there's like mossy forests and more mountains, and... Anyway, we're going to wrap it with 18-gauge square antique copper, if you can remember all those designations, because it's beautiful. It's a beautiful... Now, I want to try 20 gauge square, but right now 18 is really, I'm really enjoying it. So let's take, ooh, this stuff is nice and soft too. Um, hmm. Let's take the whole spool. Oh, that's maybe a little greedy. Let's take, just to be safe, we'll probably cut some of it off, but let's just take three feet, a whole meter, just to be on the safe side. And, oof. Oh, yes. Okay, so let's press, I'm in the very middle of the wire and I'm pressing the stone tight against the table and I'm wrapping it like this. I've never done this with square wire. Let's see if this works. Ooh, it looks like it's going to work nice. It looks like I'm pressing from all different positions and now we're here. Now we got to hold it tight. Slide it, slide it, slide it to the edge of the tabletop. Come on, slide it, slide it right to the edge, right to the edge. There we go. Okay, now, make sure it's tight. It's tight, 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 right? And now we twist it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Twist it, and then we're going to take one side and make a bale like this. I think that's right. Yeah, that looks right. We'll do that. And come around like that. And then we'll take this one and wrap it around the bale we just made, like that. Did you see that? Yeah, that was exciting. Okay, now, this guy right here, we're gonna move, right? Make a beautiful pattern, just, just wavy beauty. Maybe we'll do one little loop here. Just wavy beauty. And then, right? And then, okay, that's some wavy beauty in there. I like that. Just kind of tighten it up a little, get get every little loop right where we want it. Nice, nice wavy beauty. And, and it, it's gonna just come right around like that, around the back, okay? Now, as it comes around like that, right? Make sure, okay, get it on the back there, okay. Now we're gonna hold this in spot and flip it. And this side now gets to have fun. This side gets to do wavy, wavy beauty. And now this is the precarious part where you gotta, you just hold everything tight to keep it in its place and you're gonna mess up. So just do your best. We're gonna come around here and then these two are gonna cross, but make sure that's not popping out like that because you want your design on the front to stay where you put it. So cross these babies, cross them. And the reason why I'm teaching you this with so much authority is because I've never done it before. So therefore you'll overlook the mistakes and just assume that I know what I'm doing. All right, so this one, we're gonna come up like this and then we're gonna go like this and then we're gonna go like this. We're gonna basically weave him around that loop there. And then we're gonna come up to the top like that and boom, start wrapping him around the top loop again, or the bail, or whatever it is. Okay, this one here, what do we do? Now see, that, that moved a little bit, but not too bad. So move it back, get back where I put you. Back over there. Back where you were told to go, okay? It's kind of relaxing moving them or like molding them around like that. Okay, now this loop is getting a little too high for my liking. So 
Um, I'm just going to turn it all the way. Oh, no, no, let's just leave it for now. Okay. Um, so this one is starting to wrap around and make the scarf at the top. And this one, what happened here? Okay, this one is coming back. We have to figure out, can he make it all the way back up to the top? I think he can. I believe in him. It, can we do it without him getting too busy? I think we can do that too. So let's have him come around here. He's just going to inch his way along the edge here, so he's not making too much trouble. He's, this is not his neighborhood anymore, so he's, he wants to be careful. You know, just edge along the sideline, you know, cross on the other side of the street. And he's coming up like that. He's not making too much trouble. Okay, and he's up. He's free. Not really bumping anyone else, and he'll start to continue the scarf. Okay, beautiful. And he's locked in. Okay, now, um, let's finish him up so we can get him out of the way. Okay, so wrap him around and around. There he is. That's the end of him. Let's cut him just enough to give him a little tab to tuck in. Okay, maybe a tiny bit more. There we go. Now, tuck him into that little bowl made by the scarf. There we go. Thank you, camera, for cooperating. Let's tuck him in right there. Okay. Uh, he didn't quite tuck all the way. Just squeeze him again, and okay, that's good enough. He's sticking out a little, but this guy's gonna come around and wrap totally wrap around him, so he just so he's tucked. Okay, and this guy's just enough to keep wrapping around and wrapping around to build that scarf. Nice and high, as high as we want to go. It's up to you how high you want to go. I think that's good. Let's see if we go one more. Let's see what that looks like. That's kind of cool, too. Let's do that. All right. Right there. End it. Thank you, camera. Tuck him in. Now, that's a nice big bowl. If you can tuck real easily, just shove him way down in there. Okay, good. Strong, strong. Um, now, you can't end right here because this thing could slip right out. But this is a good framework to work with. And I feel like we got some really pretty loops going on here. All right, good. Just playing with them, adjusting them, just feeling them out, getting them moving how I like from every position. All right, okay. All right. And this, this side's good too. I want that a little, little bit of a curve in there. All right, good, beautiful. Now, we take 26 gauge antique copper, somewhere around here. Now this doesn't have to be square. This can be regular round and, where, what, who, who's messing with this? Where's the end? There it is, okay. Um, so you can take a few pieces, you can try to do it all in one, but I'm gonna take about a little more than a foot. It's a little more than a third of a meter, okay? And it, all I'm doing now is, there's no like amazing, perfect way to do this. Basically, I'm gonna anchor the wire somewhere and then I'm gonna wrap it and just tighten up all the connections. And I'm gonna try to do it in a way so it doesn't look too messy. If you do it right, you can kind of make it look like another pattern or you can make it out along the edges only so it just kind of doesn't show too much. I think I'm gonna do, gonna do, I don't know, not sure what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna feel it out as I go. But, um, and do the back too. Now the back, if you don't care about it showing too much, you can make it messier to make it stronger. It's more important to make it strong than to make it beautiful on the back especially. But strength is first and foremost, because you don't want, no matter how beautiful it is, you don't want someone to be wearing it and the stone slips out and breaks and then they trip on it and they fall and go face first into the, let's say they're at a wedding, they go face first into the cake and then it's like an embarrassment for years to come and everyone blames it on you. And then they send, they send an army of people with pitchforks and torches to your house because you created that jewelry piece that ruined half the wedding. Anyway, so let's see how we're gonna do this. I think I'm gonna try to use the whole wire. So a lot of times I'll t go from the middle of the wire and then I have two different wires to play with, one on each side. But this time I think I'm just going to, I'm gonna literally give myself just like two inches on this side, right? So I'm gonna wrap like this, and I'm just gonna take this this small end and just wrap it all the way up into, right up into the scarf here and tuck it. So it's it's anchored and tucked. Now, this teeny tiny little wire, you can shove him in there, but he can bounce right back out. With really thin wire like this, if I wanna make it more substantial, what I'll do is I'll cut it, I'll make a tiny coil first, teeny tiny little coil, because 
I need to get a better focus lens for this camera because this lens doesn't, the autofocus just doesn't know what it's looking at. Okay, so I'm going to squeeze him and then roll him. Little tiny rolls. That's how we make a lot of swirls. And so now he has a big clunky spiral. So now when we shove the spiral down there, there's more substance to the wire to get stuck which we want it to do. We want to get stuck way down in there, never to come out. And you can always add a dab, a little little dab of um, E6000 or super glue in there too. And it does, if, if, you, if you get it just right, it won't even touch the stone. So in the future, if you want to totally unwrap the stone, there'll be no glue residue on the stone. But that should stay. Now, here we come around. Now we have this guy to play with. What do we do with him? Where do we put him first? What can I, that's an obvious connection right there. Should we just make our way over there? Let's see, we'll go around here one more time. And Another thing, you don't want to just jump to the next connection. Sometimes you do if you want that wire to be visible and you can pull it tight. But sometimes you want to work your way over to a connection. So like this, I'm going to wrap it around this coming all the way down until I connect to that spot where I want to make it make a strong connection there. So I'm going to thread him under here. And now it's just like sewing, except the wire is a little bit more finicky than a regular sewing thread, as you'll see. It kinks and you have to control it more. And, and if you pull too hard and you get a little kink, you could break it. So takes a little bit more practice if you're not used to it. But if you are used to sewing, parts of this should be pretty easy. And if you're not used to doing anything, then the whole thing's going to be hard and you'll probably cry. Cry many times. We like to make people cry on this channel because we're sponsored by a Kleenex company. And so if what brand of Kleenex do you use? Do you use the brand that, we, that sponsors us? If not, you should switch right now. And boom. And that connection is now made. And then we can, what do we do now? Well, we can, if we want to have it decorative, sometimes it looks decorative as well as functional to wrap little diagonals with the thin wire all along your thick wire. So we can come all the way down here and then we could do some connections there, 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 all over the place. But I don't think I want to do that. I want to think I want to keep the, I think I want to keep this prettiness only around the periphery. And that'll still give me plenty of strength that the stone will hold its spot forever and ever and ever, unless you get in a really bad bar fight and someone tries to grab your necklace. But if that happens at the wedding, then, you know, you should probably take your necklace off and hand it to the best man or the first, not the first lady, what do they call the, the maid of honor? You should hand her the, um, hand her your necklace and then you can resume your fisticuffs. All right. So see how it's real pretty. And it, at first it'll, you, you have to get the hang of getting it even, like, these diagonals, you want them to be spaced evenly. Sometimes you got to mess them around with your fingernail, and sometimes you got to get in the groove of it, and sometimes, you know, but it's fun, it, nevertheless. It's just. See, those are not lining up quite right, so I'm going to move them around a little bit. But also, don't, don't try to be perfect. Don't try to make it like the most perfect thing ever, because people are mostly going to be looking at this crazy swirl and the beautiful stone underneath. And as you start to uh, see, that was a kink right there. I, I bent that too much. So you want to straighten that out and try to keep that from, because a too sharp of a bend can turn into a weak spot. And then if you pull it the wrong way, the wire could break. And that's what you don't want. So then you have to get a new wire and you have to figure out what to do with it, this, the end left over of the old wire and, and uh, all kinds of stuff. All right. So see how that's threading through there? I'm just going to keep doing that. Now see how it came around here. Well, I wasn't, wasn't paying attention to I shot probably should have been is I could each of these after I threaded these I could have reached out and grabbed one of those and that would have made that stronger. So I missed out on that opportunity because I was all excited about the, the story of the bride and, and all that stuff. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and do it now because I don't want to forget and this is gonna this is where our real strength is gonna come in. So notice I tried to shortcut all the way over to there. I probably yeah see that's not working. So I'm, I'm gonna. I'm going to have him come right there, and then I'll have him come under here again. It's going to make my perfect tapestry look a little messier, but that's okay. Um, let's put him right there. Pull tight. Okay, now, I'm going to grab onto that loop. Pull tight. And... I'm going to work my way around here. I mean, 
and you can have a plan. You can have like a blueprint, or you can just meander. And eventually, as long as you catch all the all the places that need a strong connection to, you know, strengthen them, then you'll be fine. I really like this square wire kind of, it grabs the stone, but it doesn't hold it so tight that it's hard to get the thin wire underneath. Like this thin wire is getting underneath pretty easily. I don't like that. That was a little bit too sloppy. Let's see if we can tighten that up. I'm going to make a kink trying to tighten that one spot. Nope, I did it. I did it. Sometimes you just got to go with it and believe in yourself. All right, see, now this right here, now I can reach back out to the front. So start coming around this guy. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go around the neck first because I want to get it right here. If you are having a hard time getting your thin wire underneath the thick, take your fingernail and get it under there and lift it a little bit for a second, and then voila. That's always the trick I go to. All right, that looks good. Start threading under this again. Looking good, looking good. I'm gonna put them under this one. Whoops. And the other thing is getting controlling your wire so it goes under the piece you want, but not under other pieces you don't want it to go under. And that's just a lot of trial and error. Okay, I want him under there, and then I want him to come back up. Come back up. Thank you. And then this loop here is danger. It's going to turn into a kink if I don't direct it as I pull it through. See that? It's, see that? It's starting to turn. It's going to turn into a really harsh loop that's going to become a kink, but I got it through in time. And it, it made a little kink, but I'm going to straighten it out now. Hopefully it won't come back to haunt us. Now we're going to go under this one again. Once you come down to about an inch and a half, two inches, um, don't try to keep going with it. Try to find a place to anchor. And what I do is I just make another little curly cue. This time, actually, a bigger curly cue, which is fine because it's the bigger it is, the more it'll be easier to shove it somewhere where it will stay. So we're making this little curly cue. It's an ugly curly cue. But that's okay. His mother loves him. And look at that, and shove him right in there. Bam. Now, you could say, oh, that could come out and snag at some point. Of course it could. So you can try to shove it somewhere really deep where it might never come out, but I just had a tiny little drop at E6000. Again, making sure it doesn't really touch the stone, just wire to wire, and then boom. But I think I can tuck him somewhere better than this. Let me see. Not really. I just came around a couple more times and shoved him in there really good. But you can shove him in there. You can, you know, whatever. I'm happy with that. E6000 right there. Bam. This stuff, it's just industrial strength rubber cement, so if you wipe it a little bit with your fingers and then you just rub your fingers, it, it falls right off like like skin, like school glue. Now it's, it's not really safe to breathe it for a long time or keep it on your skin, so you want to rub it off pretty quick, But or you can use gloves. Or if you're really, really afraid of chemicals and the world, you can wear gauntlets while you do this, like big metal suit of armor gloves. And chain mail and stuff and you can wrap yourself in bubble tape bubble wrap and uh and then uh put on one of those hyperbaric chamber suits that they use when they're dealing with infectious diseases that's probably the best way if you're gonna wire wrap and you're scared of everything now this is pretty strong it's staying that stone is not popping out it's good um but i like this pattern coming around here and coming around here and it feels like it's missing down there that little piece needs to be tucked a little better. Shove that in. Okay. So I'm going to take another piece of wire, just a little bit, to finish off just the design. And I could probably find a little more, a few more key places where it could be strengthened. So I'm just going to take about 10 inches. Yeah, that's 9 inches. And we'll start right where we left off. Maybe we'll make another little swirl and shove it right on top of that swirl right there. There we go. Now... Hmm, that's a nice little connection there. Let's just make that right there. It'll make everything a little stronger. So whoop, pull it right in there. Go around one more time. Sometimes going around twice gives it like an extra little something something. Milk's neater too sometimes. Oops. I must pull that other wire in there. Okay. Now, these two ends ended up in the same spot. 
Um, I can take this, wind it back up here, try to get it, tuck it in the scarf. That's the best place if you can get it up and tuck it in the scarf. You can't always get back up there. Um, but this thing is super strong now. I don't really need to do any more tucking. So I can just cut it and make curly Q, curly Q, shove them both in. I think I'm just going to do that. Keep it simple. Uh, yeah, that was fun. That one curly Q I shoved right in there. Can you even see it? You can even barely see it because I shoved it so good. And I'm amazing. I'm, getting, I'm an amazing shover. I should just walk around shoving people. Be like, don't mind me. This is my profession. I was trained in shoving. So if you get shoved over, you can't complain because you were shoved by a professional shover and you should just be glad. I think they have names for people like that. They stand outside the bars with their arms crossed and don't let drunk people stay in the bar and they don't let shady people come in without paying. Stuff like that. I don't know what they're called. Yeah, I shoved two of them on top of each other. That's where the previous one was. This is it's just going to be a little nest of swirls. They might, they might um, end up breeding and having little baby swirls. Come back and find there's little swirls all over my piece. Be like, what happened here? Can't leave you guys alone for a second. All right, I think we're done.